<clears throat> okay. Uh, this, this morning we're going to be going over adjustments on the payroll side. And um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to go ahead and just ask. Uh, if you could go ahead and mute your phones, um, unless you have a question, that way we don't get a lot of uh, background noise. We'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is, I'm just gonna go to the adjustment screen itself, which is under the core. And um, what I wanted to show you on this adjustment screen, as you'll see the options show up, um, there are some of them because when you look at the screen itself when you're doing when you're creating an adjustment, a lot of times it's a little confusing because there's an option for choosing a payroll item. And there are some items on the adjustment screen that don't require a payroll item to be selected. So we'll kind of go through that today as we're going along and going over all the different options that are out in adjustments. So as soon as this pulls up, we're going to go ahead and look at the adjustment screen itself. <clears throat> and just to, just so you know, the reason, there we go, the reason it was taking so long is because of payroll items. Payroll items has a tendency to make um, the initial like when you're actually trying to um, pull up something that has to do with anything with payroll items, it takes a little little while. You'll notice that the blue line across the top was going and just flashing. And usually what's happening is because there's so many payroll items, it takes a little longer. But once you've accessed that, the next time you go in to, to that screen or a pay or anything that's associated with the payroll item, it will come up a little bit quicker. Um, they are going to try to remedy that, maybe get rid of some of the properties that are being pulled in because right now it's pulling in everything. That's why it takes so long on the initial um, try to pull up anything related to payroll items. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and show you like all the different fields that are out under the create option under adjustments. <clears throat> so it's under type and you'll see all of these different options that are available to make adjustments to. So we're going to talk about each one of these, but as we go along, I'll tell you like which ones do not need a payroll item associated with them. But like I said, um, most of them do, but there are some in here that do not, just so you're aware of that. So the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to go in, I'm just going to run a report, a W-2 report for an employee because we're going to kind of go off of that employee for the, at the beginning here just to look at the, the uh, W-2 report and what actually gets, um, gets updated on the W-2 report when you're using adjustments. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my employee or pull in my employee, I should say. <clears throat> All right, so we'll go ahead and generate the report and take a look at it. And then we're going to go to adjustments. And I'm going to actually make a couple of adjustments to, to some different um, objects that basically affect the W-2 reporting, which was just like if you're used to classic, it's just like the, the 001 record, the federal record in classic. It had several different options on there, which would basically include those fields on the W-2 report. So. Let's just take a look at the W-2 report. Maybe. Okay, so if we look at the W-2 report, basically we will see, like obviously our federal taxes, um, there's a vehicle lease, I forgot to remove it yesterday, I was doing some testing. So you can see there's an employer health coverage, 457, section 125. So we're going to go in and add a few things to, the, to this. Um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. And then that way, uh, if you need to say something, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, yes, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back into adjustments under the core. 
And the nice thing with this is, okay, it, let's just say that my employee that we, that we ran the W-2 or 4 for, let's just say that she has, um, she is an employee that she pays some insurance for her husband, okay? So if you saw we had the health insurance, it was on the W-2, but um, just like in classic, we have that health insurance where we can actually add an additional amount. So what we could do is we could go on into adjustments and add that amount here, and then that additional amount will actually show on the W-2 report. So what I'm going to do for this employee for right now, we'll just go in, say that we're going to be adding an additional amount for the health insurance, as well as some moving expenses. So I'm going to go into the create option, find my employee, and then because this is going to be affecting or going on the federal, the 001 record, just like it would have in classic because um, the additional health insurance that went on the federal record, the moving expenses that went on the federal record. We're going to go into the, the payroll item option and we're going to choose the federal 001 record. <clears throat> Sorry, it's taking just a few seconds here. Um, one other feature I will show you too, because I'm going, I'm going to add two different adjustments for this employee. Okay, so because I want to add two, we've got this feature up here in the top left is called create new or close. When I have this create new option checked, what's going to happen is it will allow me to create one record. And then it will keep the record open, but it will allow me just to go into that record and add a new record for the, the same employee. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this federal tax option. And then the type, the first thing I'm going to choose is the health insurance option. So I'm going to be making, making an adjustment to health insurance because I want to show, have that show up on the W-2. All right, I have to put in the date. I'll just use today's date. And then the dollar amount of the adjustment that I'm adding. So if she paid $200 more, and we want that to be reflected on the W-2, I'm going to put in 200. I'm going to leave the description blank, or I could put in um, a description of extra health insurance. And then down here, we have these to date option fields. Um, those only would affect when we're doing, there's going to be other options on here, other types that um, these are going to affect. So right now, we're not going to talk about those. I was just going to leave them, those go because what we're doing here is not going to affect anything on the payroll items itself, except behind the scenes for this health insurance. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the save option here. And you'll notice it saved it, but you can see it kept the federal tax option open. But now I can go in and choose another type. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go ahead and choose the moving expenses option. I'm going to put in the date, the moving expenses, and then I can put in a description. And again, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to save this record. So now I'm going to go ahead and close this. So let me just exit out of here. So here you can see, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this vehicle lease because I forgot to take that out last night when I was testing. So we're going to go ahead and we can see that I added this health insurance and the moving expenses. Now, if we look at the initial W-2 report that I ran, her health insurance was 1560 25 So I'm adding $200, so it's going to be 1760 It should be 1760 So we'll go ahead and run the report. And again, these two that we just added only make a, an effect or only make an addition on the W-2 report itself. They don't do anything with... Um, the deduction screen at all. I mean, anything that's done here with those two is behind the scenes. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this report.
Oh, well, I would have, but if you can see what I did wrong, this is a FYI for everybody that has done this or hasn't done this. I forgot to click the add button because I wanted to add just, I just only wanted to run W2 report for this employee. I forgot to click add. So basically what it's doing now is processing W2s for all employees. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Didn't take too long. But that will happen if you forget to click the add button. All right, so let me find her. Okay, and right here we can see the health insurance went up to 1760. And now you can see that there's moving expenses on her W-2 as well. All right, um, the next thing we're going to talk about are <laughs> the taxable benefits. So again, let's before we do that, I want to go ahead and go to the payroll item screen so you can take a look at her federal tax record. See, we'll pull her up. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a look at her federal tax record. And I just want to basically go in and look at her applicable and her total gross for the, let's just say for the year. Well, we'll do it all, everything. But you can see her month-to-date, quarter, fiscal, and year-to-date, okay? Let's just take a look at the year-to-date total. So we've got 76.2904 for the total, 62.73.39 for the, for the applicable, all right? So now I'm gonna go back in to the adjustment screen. When I do that, I'm going to uh, choose the taxable benefits option when you choose the taxable benefits option, um, it's going to add that amount to the W-2. So whatever you, you put on there, it's going to add that to the W-2 report. But it's also going to increase whatever options, the to-date options that we tell it to. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about, the to-date options. So I'm going to go ahead, again, put in my employee. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose the federal record because uh, I want to make a, a, a adjustment to the taxable benefits for the for the W-2. So I want that to be included. Then I'm going to choose the type, which is the taxable benefits option. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in the date and then the dollar amount. Let's just put in $200. Okay, now we'll talk about the to date options. If I only want the fiscal or the, or the year to date field on the payroll item adjusted, I would leave that checked. If I want month to date, I'll check that. Or quarter to date, I'll check that. Fiscal year to date, I'll check that. If I want them all, I just leave them all checked. The default is everything is checked. The reason we have this to date option on here is because there were uh, there's issues a lot of times with um, fiscal year to date totals on like the 400 or 450 record, especially the 450 at the um, advanced time. And so districts were like, we have to be able to change that because, you know, there was, there's a, there was a problem, it needs to be adjusted. Well, in classic, you could always do that. You could go to that record and change it, where in here, you cannot do that on the payroll item screen. So we made this to date field option available so you can make adjustments to those screens by using those, those check marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in the $200. I'm gonna save the record. And then when, oops, when, oh yeah, I, I have the create new. So I'm gonna go back in to the payroll item screen. And what should have happened is that should have increased the federal tax, um, all of the amounts because I didn't uncheck anything. But the nice thing about this is when you, you choose that tax benefit op option and you increase it by however many dollars you're increasing it, it actually updates the federal, the state, the city, the Medicare school district, if, it's app if those are applicable. It updates the gross and the applicable gross on all of those records all at the same time. You don't have to go in individually and do the federal and do the state and do city or school district if applicable and the Medicare. Now, the only thing about the Medicare is 
if you're increasing the applicable growth and the growth, you have to make sure that you pay the Medicare portion that should be paid on that dollar amount that you're that that the employee is getting as a taxable benefit if you didn't process it through the payroll. Let me say that again. If you didn't process it through the payroll, if you're doing it through adjustments, you're not processing it through the payroll. So you have to go in and you have to make sure that that payment on that adjustment is made for Medicare, whether it be all, all board amount, employee and board amount, it has to be paid. So we'll go ahead and we will take a look at Gail Stewart's uh, federal record and her year to date, all of her figures would have been updated, should have been. And they weren't. <laughs> they didn't update. Okay, that's not good. Um, I have to double check on that one with the guys because it should have updated that. Uh, let's go in and run the W-2 report because it should be included on there. Let me go ahead and pull her up. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the taxable benefit amount does appear on the W-2 report as it should, but I'm pretty sure it should have been increasing it on the the items as well. I will double check that with the programmer because that could be a bug. And then I will let everybody know too on that one. Um, we have uh, another adjustment is your fringe benefits. So that would be um, put on the W-2 as well because that is something that goes in box 14 on the W-2 report. And so that should increase your federal state growth and your taxable growth. So let's go in and, uh, well, again, we'll, we'll pick on our Gail Stewart employee. She, now go ahead and create an adjustment for fringe benefits for her. And we'll do that in the federal record. Do fringe. We'll do $200. We'll go ahead and save the record. And then I'll go ahead and get the W-2 report running first here. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and generate this. And again, that fringe benefit amount should be appearing on the W-2 because it, it's going to go in box 14 on the W-2 uh, file or the W-2 form. <clears throat> and there's your fringe benefits. And then let's verify because if it didn't, again, this is something I want to talk to the programmers about, make sure. But the fringe benefit should increase your federal and state growth and taxable growth. So I want to make sure that the growth and the taxable growth for her got updated. And it should have. Hold on here. We'll pull that up on their payroll items. Okay, that didn't work either. So there's another one I'm going to ask them about because I tested this before and it worked. So I'm not quite sure why it's not doing it now, but I will talk to the programmers about that and I will send out a message and let you know for sure um, if, it, you know, why it's not doing it. Um, the next option under the adjustments is your uh, life insurance, your used to be your NC1 payments in classic and those now are done again 
under adjustments if, only if, they forgot to process a, the life insurance payment through a regular payroll. The ultimate is to go ahead and get it processed through a regular payroll, but that doesn't always happen. Those get missed, they get forgotten. And so if they get forgotten, you can go into adjustments and add it through there. Now, the nice thing with the life insurance is when you process it through adjustments, instead of having to go in and adjust every record, your federal, your city, your state, Medicare, school district, like we did in classic, you had to go in manually and adjust the gross and applicable gross on every one of those records, as well as the Medicare withholding for the board and employee, because those have to be, that has to be paid for the life insurance premium. So um, the nice thing about it is on the redesign, when you're going in and adding the life insurance, you only have to add it to the federal, the 001 record. When you do that, it should update all of those other records, the state, the city, the Medicare, the school district, growth and the applicable growth. And again, you'd still have to be um, paying the Medicare portion, the board or the employer, a combination would have to pay that amount. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and, and process this through adjustments. We're going to go ahead again and choose a federal tax option. And we're going to choose the life insurance. And we'll put the date. And let's just do $100. We want to update all the fields. So we'll go ahead and do that. I skipped the description, as you can see. Um, let's make sure. OK. So if I go ahead and go in and run the W-2 report, we'll be able to see that life insurance premium is going to be on the report because it should be. Oops, come on here. I'll go ahead and add her, go ahead and generate the report. I know this is kind of repetitive, but I want to, like I said, I kind of want to show you what each thing is supposed to be doing. <clears throat> okay, so on the W-2 report for her, we can see the insurance, the life, this is your life insurance payment. Now we should be able to go in to the payroll items and the gross and applicable gross should have been updated by the $100 on the federal record. Oh, it didn't work. Ah. Okay, there's another one that didn't work. I'm going to, again, talk to the program because I tested all of this last week and it worked. Um, we have a new instance, so I'm wondering if maybe that might be part of the problem, but uh, not quite sure. But I will definitely check on that one as well because that should have been updated because when we process this, it should have updated all of the records, like the federal, the state, everything should get updated accordingly. So there must be something. Yeah, those figures are not changing, but they should. They should be updating. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the adoption assistance. So I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you with running it, but um, if you have someone that is that qualifies for that adoption assistance option, you're going to go in and do the same thing under adjustments. There's an adoption assistance type. You would choose that option. And when you choose that option, it's going to actually go ahead and then include that on the W-2 report. And it should increase the Medicare and city tax growth and the applicable growth. And again, if you're using adjustments to make that entry, you'd have to make sure that the Medicare employer and board portion are paid because of the manual adjustment. 
Um, there's a another one, another option which is the dependent care option. If your district does not already have a payroll item set up, because there is a dependent care payroll item set up, and a lot of districts use that to process it, they just do it per pay. If they don't have that option set up, you can use the adjustments to enter in a dependent, the dependent care information. And again, that is something that gets added to the W-2 so that would be included on the W-2. Um, another option is the third party uh, sick pay. Again, there's two options of the third party pay. Just like in classic, if you have a non-taxable third party pay, um, all we, what happened in the classic and the same thing here, you're basically just gonna go in and add that third party pay information on this screen as the, as the adjustment. It's gonna add, if it's non-taxable, it's gonna add that to the W-2 as a code J because it's non-taxable. If it's a taxable adjustment, um, you're going to manually, if, if the third party, I should say, if the third party is taxable, you're going to have to make adjustments to the federal, the state, the Medicare and school districts uh, total and taxable grows. So with that being said, you're going to have to make manual changes through adjustments for those taxable items for each one of those options. So if you've got federal, state, Medicare, if school district and, and city are, they apply, you'd have to adjust those as well, but you're going to be adjusting the total and taxable growth for those. And then again, if for some reason you're entering uh, the taxable amount from the third party, and if they did not pay any Medicare, you would be, the company or the district would be responsible for paying the Medicare portion that is due. And if that is the case, they would have to, again, they would have to go into the Medicare record. So let me just pull this up so you can see. So we would choose the Medicare record down here. And then if you're having to pay the, the portion for the Medicare, you would choose the Medicare record, but in here you're going to be choosing the amount withheld, which is the employee portion. So they would choose that option and they would, uh, they would enter in the amount that the, they withheld for the employee or the amount that they're paying for the employee. And then you would also go in and do the board amount. So you do one record for the amount withheld, then you have to do another record for the board amount of payroll item because you have to pay the, the Medicare for, for the board and for the employee. So you would have to create two separate records for the withholding amount for the third party taxable. Uh, we also have a vehicle lease information, and you can remember on the W-2 report, we actually saw that. So um, I could go out and I could create for my, my lady here, my Gail Stewart lady. Again, this goes on your federal tax record, just like it did in classic, where they had all those different options where you entered usually at the end of the year, vehicle lease was one of them. So we would go in under the federal record and we choose the vehicle lease option, put in the date, put in the dollar amount. We could put a description in if we wanted to. This does not affect any of the to date fields on the payroll item records at all. So we're gonna save it. <clears throat> and then when we run the W-2 report, we'll see the vehicle lease option is on there. I'm gonna go ahead and run the W-2 report this time, just with the form. So you can see that it puts that in box uh, 14 on the W-2, the vehicle lease. So let me go back up here and we'll choose the form option. This is just an example. We don't really have the forms perfected yet. They're not ready to be used, but I'm just gonna show you just so you can see what it, lo what it looks like on the form. Go ahead and generate the report.
And when I pull that up, we should see vehicle lease, $2,000 in box 14, which we do. Um, let's see, how do I get out of this thing here? There we go. Okay. Um, let's go back. All right, our next option is the health reimbursement option. And for that to be showing on the W-2 report, that health reimbursement is basically, that was, I think, started last year. And it was like a, 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 a amount or a, uh, uh, an agreement or a plan that came up that reimburses the employees for a portion of the healthcare expenses by the employer. The employer pays the employee for that. So um, I don't know if a lot of school districts have that. If they did, they're gonna they could go ahead and use that um, the adjustments option for that, and then in, he, in there they could put in the. Uh, health reimbursement. So we'll go ahead, we'll do, we'll create one just in case we have some districts that use that. Go ahead and pull her up. Again, that's gonna be on the federal record because in classic, that's where that, that field was at on the federal tax record. Now the health reimbursement is down here, unfortunately, kind of at the bottom. And then we'll just put in $300. Go ahead and save that. And I'll go ahead and just run the report real quick so you can see it. Um, Stuart. And the health reimbursement is right here on this, on the W-2 report. All right. Um, we have an applicable, applicable, I can't say it very well, applicable annuities option under adjustments. And basically what that will do is on your W-2 report, if you're looking at the W-2 report, and for some reason the applicable annuities do not appear to be accurate, you can actually go in and make adjustments under the adjustments option. So you could go to the create, and here you could select whichever payroll item, you know, if it was the federal, the state, whatever. But then the type, you could actually choose that um, applicable annuities option. And then maybe it's it's showing $50 higher than it should be. Maybe some something happened and it never got updated for some reason. So you need to subtract $50. You could put in a negative $50 uh, figure in the amount field and save it and then go back in and run your W-2 report. And that should be adjusted then on the W-2 report under the applicable annuities. Um, Another option that we have is the board amount of the payroll item. We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, could be like maybe the retirement, the Medicare, um, maybe the board obviously pays a portion of health insurance. So maybe we need to adjust a board amount of some sort of a payroll item. Maybe maybe they had initially not paid, you know, when the employee started, they didn't pay for the employee's um, health insurance. So now they want to adjust that on the, on the um, item, they can actually go in and, and do that. They could go in and make an adjustment to that board amount on that payroll item. So um, another thing would be, perfect example here, let's just say that the employee was supposed to have retirement pickup. Well, the first two pays, they didn't have that corrected. They didn't have the employee pickup. They had the employee paying it. They could make adjustments through this screen to correct it. And obviously, you know, they may need to pay more because it's board pickup to the retirement entity, but they can go in here then and make the adjustments to 
the 691 record and maybe the 591 record, you know, subtracting everything off of the 591 record and adding it onto the 691 record. This is a place where they would do that. Um, we also have an earned income credit amount option on here. Um, basically, I don't think that is even being used right now. Um, I know I, in the, in the past, it was a carryover in Classic. We just kept that field out there, and I'm assuming that we just pulled it over uh, into the redesign in case, probably in case it ever is needed or comes back. Um, then we have um, a, the additional withholding amount. So if you use that adjustment option, um, the payroll item, uh, with the amount that they entered in for this additional withholding will be added to the two date field on the payroll item itself. So if you, uh, they withheld an additional $25, it's going to actually be showing in those two date fields on that particular record that you choose to make that, that, amount, that adjustment to. <clears throat> we have the, uh, the portion of fiscal city board amount for the rehired retiree, the fiscal day amount that was withheld as a rehired retiree, and the growth that was earned as a rehired retiree. All three of these fields, you'll notice if we go in, if we went into like the 450 record, 400 record, 590, 591, 690, 691, they're not on, you do not see them on the UI. They're not available on the UI. These are all behind the scenes. So if you make adjustments to these these field, any of these fields, you won't see it on any of the screens, like the 400 record or 450. Um, let's just go in to one of the records and I'll show you because they're nowhere on the UI. It's all in, in it's all behind the scenes. And if you make adjustments to those records, it will up, it'll basically be making an adjustment to either the SCRS surcharge report if for a rehired retiree. Again, it's all behind the scenes. You, there's a calculation that is used basically. Um, it's all done through the system. It makes a calculation. And so if the employee um, it meets that or doesn't meet that minimum for SCRS, they'll actually be on that surcharge report. Same thing holds true for your advance for STRS. Calculations are done behind the scenes and it actually uh, adds that information on the STRS report or advance report, sorry, STRS advance report. Um, let me just show you a 450 record. And you'll see, again, because in classic, you always saw those re re or retiree fields, but you do not see those on, this, on these screens. I take it back. You do see a couple of them here, but they're nothing, there's nothing here as far as like the dollar amounts. You can see like the effective retirement date, the retirement system, but there's nothing as far as the retiree grows, retiree withheld, anything like that. We don't have that information on here. It's all behind the scenes. Um, another option out in adjustments is uh, an adjustment for the ODJFS growth or the ODJFS weeks. Now, if you choose the ODJFS growth option, this is one of the options. What am I doing here? Pull up the wrong thing. Click on the wrong thing. Let's try this. Okay. Um, it, you'll notice on the ODJFS growth, because a lot of times people are like, well, what payroll item do I choose? This is one of those that you do not have to choose a payroll item because that doesn't really affect the report because this is only, when we make the adjustment, all this is affecting is the ODJFS report, whether it be for the ODJFS quarter to take gross or the ODJFS weeks. Those are the only two adjustments we're making. So, so here, that means we don't have to actually put in a payroll item. <clears throat> we could put in the employee, skip the payroll item, go down and choose the ODGFS total growth field, go in, put in a date, and then put in the amount that needs to be entered in here. 
And then on that report, you'll see it um, see it reflected on the report. Let's go ahead. I'll go ahead and run the ODGFS report first so we can take a look at somebody and then we'll actually make adjustments to the hours or to the weeks and to the growth. So you can actually see it on the report. Um, let's just go ahead and generate the report. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Feel free to unmute yourselves and go ahead and ask. No questions. Everybody's quiet this morning. That's because it's Friday. Um, another thing to keep in mind too, while this is processing, um, because in Classic, you could see, like, if you made it to updates to the ODJFS quarter to date growth, that used to be on the 002 record, the, the state record. There used to be a field on there for the ODJFS growth. You'll no longer see that in redesign. Again, this is something that's behind the scenes. If, if you make an adjustment to the growth, ODJFS growth, you're not going to see it on the 002 record. The only place you're going to see it is on the report when you make the change. And as soon as this finishes processing, we will pull it up and then we'll go ahead and make an adjustment. We'll do an adjustment to the weeks and the uh, growth all at the same time. That way we only have to run the report one more time and We'll do that. Um, let's go in here while we're letting that process. Maybe. Um, if we go back into adjustments, you can see there's another option that you can make an adjustment to, and that is gonna be your retirement days and hours. So again, the same thing as your ODJFS information, you do not have to choose a payroll item. You don't have to choose like a 400 or 450 or whatever. Don't have to choose those because this basically will make adjustments to your pay report that you're processing, if you're processing a payroll. So if you would go in and initialize your payroll and you're scrolling through it to verify everybody has days and hours, you find somebody that doesn't have days or hours, you can go into adjustments, you can make the correction, you could add SERS retirement days, SERS retirement hours, or SCRS retirement days, SCRS retirement hours for that employee. By choosing the employee, then you're going to go in, skip the payroll item, choose your uh, retirement entity days and, uh, and entering your date, however many days. So if they're supposed to have 10 days, they have zero showing right now. You could go in and add the 10 and save it. Then you could create another record for the hours. When you go back into your payroll that you're processing, you could rerun pay report. When you do that, you should be able to go into the pay report, find that employee, and now that employee should be showing with the correct days and the correct hours. All right, let's just say that we went through the payroll and we totally didn't see this person didn't have days and hours, totally skipped it. We were out of luck there. We could go in before we run and create, before we actually create the tape file for submission to the retirement entity, we could actually go in and do an adjustment for the retirement days, retirement hours for that employee. When we do that and we run, we, we rerun the SRS or SRS uh, per pay report, that person should then have the days and hours appearing on that report. Now, something to keep in mind when you're using the adjustments for your retirement days or hours, the date that you're entering in has to be a, a date within the period beginning and ending date of the payroll. It cannot be the pay date. It has to be a date within the payroll processing dates. So between the beginning date and the ending date has to be one of those dates. 
then it will actually appear on your report or on your on your uh, um, pay report or your SCRS, SC, STRS per pay report. Okay, I think this is finally finished. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. Let's just find somebody here. Let's just go with Jake Gardner. So he's our first one. It shows 82.10.88 for his growth. And he's got 12 weeks. So we're gonna add, a, add one week and we'll add $500 to his gross. All right, so let's go back into the adjustments option. And we'll do a create. And we'll pull him up, Jake Gardner. And again, since there's really no payroll item involved with this adjustment, we can go straight to the ODJFS gross. We'll put in a date and we'll put in $500 for this gross. And then we're gonna make an adjustment to the weeks. Weeks. We'll just do one week. All right. Now let me go back and I'll run that report again. And then while that's processing, we can go ahead and we can talk about something else. Go ahead and generate the report. All right, so while that's processing, we will go ahead, whoops, it's not processing yet. Now it's processing. Um, let's go ahead and go back to adjustments. And there's another option, which in classic it's used as well for EMIS reporting. So maybe a district has a coach, doesn't teach, doesn't have any other position, only a coaching position. Well, when they pay that employee, they forgot to include any EMIS days and hours, that there's nothing there. So again, we can go into adjustments, just like we would have in classic in attendance screen, and we can adjust it, we can add attendance days. Or if there's absences that are missing, we could add absences. So we could go into adjustments, find the employee. And again, because there's really no payroll item involved with making adjustments to these days, we don't have to choose a payroll item. But then we can go in and we can choose the EMIS attendance option or the EMIS absence option. And when we do that, we can then put in the amount. So let's just say we chose the attendance option. The employee, he worked for, let's say 50 days. We put in the 50 days. When we do that and a SIF collection is ran to pull in the EMIS attendance and absences, he's going to be showing with 50 days because we made that adjustment for the 50 days through the adjustment journal. <clears throat> Um, another thing that we'll go ahead and look at is the board pickup amount of a payroll item. So you have employees who have pickup on pickup, you know, retirement, they have Medicare pickup. Um, what it will actually do, let's just go in and we'll look at an employee that, a payroll item, we'll look at like a 690 record. So if we look at the record itself, we can actually see, let me take a look here, we'll find her. Okay, she has a 691 record, we'll use Vicki. All right, so on her 691 record, right now I'm gonna scroll down, you can see that she doesn't have anything showing as far as the employer amount over here is the employer amount, there's nothing showing at all. So. Let's go in, let's do something. Let's go in at first and add like a board paid amount and then we'll do a pickup amount. All right, so I'm gonna go into adjustments. Uh, maybe if I can get to the right screen here. Go ahead and do a create. And as, as you remember, the year-to-date board amount showed zero. So, Cruz, K-1, 
Okay. Now, since this is affecting a payroll item, we're going to go ahead and choose that payroll item, which was a 691. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's go in and do a board amount of the payroll item first. So let's just say that um, $600 is made. Let's just say she's the one of them that we actually need to make an adjustment to because they were charging it from the 591, but she really should have had board pickup. So we'll do the $600 board amount, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do another type, which is the board pickup of the payroll item to 2020, and let's just say that's $60. Don't do my math on this. I'm just throwing out numbers here. Okay, so I should be able to go to the payroll item. And we'll pull her up. Oops, maybe. Come on. There we go. And where to go? Oh, there it is. There's our 691. You can see down here, it adjusted the year-to-date employer amount to $660. So you can see that, that those options, those adjustments affected the employer amount as well as your pickup amount. Okay, our ODJFS report is done running. So we'll go down here and you can see Jay Gardner, he now has the 13 days. And now you can see his quarter today ODJFS wages were increased by the $500 that we added through the adjustments. So that's what that's going to basically do when you add it. The last option that we have out under the adjustments is the advanced sick balance. So perfect example, let's take a look at, we'll pick on, I think Stewart, we'll pick on Gail Stewart again. Let's go ahead and look at her um, record and leaves first. What am I doing here? Oh, okay, it's coming up. Oops. Okay, so there's Gail. Let's look at her sick balance. Let's look at her, her advance, which is advanced units used was zero. She's not used any advanced days. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. Let's go to the adjustments. We're gonna add, maybe she used two days. Maybe, um, you know, you started you you started the advance advancing sick, and she wasn't included when you started. But you're like, well, we got she used two days. We got to go ahead and we got to make sure that it shows that. So we're going to go ahead and go to adjustments. And then we're going to create an adjustment for her for two days of advanced sick leave. So I'll go ahead and pull her up. And then because there's no payroll item involved, I don't have to choose one because we're, we're adjusting leaves. So I don't have to worry about the payroll item itself. And then I'm going to just choose this advanced sick leave used option, put in my date, and then how many days we're going to say that she has used two. I'm going to save that record. And then when I do, I should be able to go back to her leave screen and see that she has two advanced sick leave days. And then when she starts accumulating, getting accruals, those advanced sick days should be, be reducing. Let's take a look here. Oops. Okay, pull her up. And you can see here, she has two advanced uh, units used. Okay, so again, just a real quick recap on the adjustments. There are several options that do use 
a payroll item, okay? And those options, you can kind of like half understand them when you look at them. I mean, obviously, gross, applicable gross. Those are going to be something that I pay for a payroll item. Any of these, just remember, are all related to the federal record and the bottom one, which was the health reimbursement. All of those are basically behind the scenes on the federal tax record. Then you've got your, your total applicable amount withheld. Those all basically affect your payroll items. Your applicable annuities affect your W-2 report. Your board amount of payroll items, again, that affects your payroll item. These are behind the scenes, your fiscal year day rehire retiree information. All of these that are kind of grouped together, these ODGFS total gross to EMIS absences do not require a payroll item to be selected. And then you've got your board pickup amount of payroll item. Obviously, that's kind of self-explanatory. Talks about payroll items, so you know that a payroll item has to be chosen. And then you've got your advanced sick leave, which is obviously your leaves information. Um, does anyone have any questions on the advanced, the advancements, or the adjustments, gee, advancements, <laughs> adjustments? <laughs> And again, just so you're aware on this adjustment screen, let's just say that we wanted to pull up anyone that had moving expenses. We could filter for moving expenses. So maybe you had several people, you could run a report on that from the adjustment screen, just by you know, on your grid, pulling up, you know, what type you're, you're wanting and then going in and processing the report. So there is a report option there. And you can see there's a more option which has more, um, oh, let me finish this. Getting ahead of myself here. <coughs> we'll pull that report up. Yeah, and there's my report. Um, if I go back to the screen, Again, you can see there's the more option, which will pull, you know, whatever fields you're wanting up on the grid, you could select those, and then you could process a report off of those based on what's out on that grid. And we do have the advanced query as well. So you could pull something up that you do not see. Um, and again, that would be some another option you can use. Any questions? No questions? All right. You guys were great. Have a great weekend. We finished two minutes early. So um, if there's any questions, and I will try to get back with you on those three that did not adjust the payroll items because I know before I tested it and they were working, but like I said, this is a new instance. And also they updated it this morning. So there could be something going on with that as well. So, um, but I will get back with you. And also out on our documentation, we do have um, some information regarding adjustments out there as well. Um, no, there's no questions. Uh, everybody have a great weekend and thank you so much for tuning in. I may have to have you change my password for my loyalty. So.